Good morning, YouTube. So we got the AOTech 6-in-1 sensor arrived today that I ordered. Anyway, to pair it, I just went to the device menu, clicked on Add Device, and then they have a selection for the 6-in-1 multi-sensor in the list under the Sensors category. Here's the 6-in-1 sensor online manual. So it is powered by a pair of uh, 123A batteries. The unit I got doesn't include any batteries, but you can also power this thing with USB. They recommend for setting it up, though, that you use the USB power. And what I found that worked was go to the Add Device menu, select your device and then the third step is where you actually click the pairing button on the sensor and what i found worked the best was leave the usb cable unplugged until you're at that third step which is this one plug the sensor in and then you click the little button on the back of the unit the light will flash green and then it goes solid green and then it turns off and then at that point your device is detected so now that i've got it in there i'm going to call this the patio sensor there's all the sensors so this one has a motion sensor temperature light humidity uv and then there's also supposedly a vibration sensor it must be some sort of accelerometer in there and then you've got a battery status so now what i need to do is similar to what i've done in my bathroom logic here i've got this pleg program logic event generator basically just duplicate this logic here so this is my patio motion sensor light code so i just took the bathroom motion sensor code which is these four lines of code and then i just copied them down here everything that said br for bathroom is now patio and you can see right here all of these things have time stamps it's true at such and such a time it was last false at a different time and the value is null it's not true or false so right here i finally figured out what my problem was i've never really paid attention to this up here but these color codes are actually very handy so like green things are operators and you can see there's the dark blue says it's an input or condition name and then and that's another operator but then these red guys i'd never noticed that before unknown problem is i need an underscore there now it's dark blue it's an input or a condition name the reason i didn't pick that up before is i was just typing these things in before I had created them. So they were, I guess, unknown at that time. But then when I created these triggers that says motion detected or no motion detected. So I guess when I typed those in, I had forgot about the underscores, but I hadn't created the triggers yet. And normally you can come in like this and just pick the input trigger. But like I said, I hadn't created these yet. So I was kind of doing things backwards. I kind of went to the conditions, copy and pasted all the code in, and then I went over to the triggers. And I guess I changed my uh, naming convention. But yeah, anyway, if I save that, and let's see, what I'm going to do here is I'll change this to one minute. So the way this works is it says if the patio light was turned on automatically, and you can see that down here. Let's see, turn auto on patio light basically said if there was motion at night then this condition is met which says it's an auto on light if you had that condition to turn on the light so that's what turns this on so it says if the light has been turned on automatically and you have the sequence that there was motion detected and then no motion detected. And then it comes over here and it says, 
and there's no motion detected for one extra minute. So yeah, there we go. Let me load this code and then we'll go out and uh, turn the light on with the sensor and then see if it turns off. Okay, I think we're going to catch it this time. I missed it before the one minute was so quick that I didn't have time to uh, get the camera going before it went off. There we go. That's success. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the light on. So that's the manual on. So now there should be about a 15 minute delay. I think I missed the light turning off by about a minute, but it did turn off by itself. Okay, YouTube, it's a little after sundown. I'm going to check out the motion sensor light. I've moved the motion sensor up here. I don't know if you can see it up there. So it's closer to the door. I have it set, I think, on the highest sensitivity. And it'll usually pick you up just outside the door here. So open the door, and I haven't even stepped out yet. These are uh, passive infrared sensors. If it's a really hot summer night, you have to get like really close to the sensor for it to pick you up. But if the nights have cooled off a little bit now, recently, it'll pick me up inside the door, inside the house, which is actually fine. I, I kind of like that. That way you, you see if there's something that you might step on when you're stepping out. So yeah, then I'm collecting the parts, starting to put together the parts so I can automate that booster fan. So when we get into heating season this winter, I will have the Z-Wave controller be able to turn that fan on and off automatically whenever the temperature in the patio enclosure is warmer than the temperature in the house and it'll just automatically turn on and more, more importantly it'll turn off because like one thing I do like on Sundays when I go out on a bike ride I'll turn this on in the morning but then I might be gone until after sundown and it'll have cooled off out here so for several hours it's blowing cold air into the house so now I'll be able to have that fan when it cools down out in the patio it will shut the fan off so actually having it turn off automatically is the important thing and I've already got the code written up to turn it on I just need to uh, build up one of my Z-Wave relays and we'll try to get that wired in up here so I'll show you that in a separate video. I've still got to collect a few parts for that. As always, thanks for watching.